Hey everybody, welcome to episode 20 of Restoration Z. We are really getting there now. Uh, today I want to do sort of tidying up and finalising of the wiring. So let's just get on with that. At the end of the last episode, you may have noticed that the cable that came under here and went through here uh, went over the top. And that was a mistake that I made when I put the subframe on. Um, and it was not going to be possible to get all the wiring back through until I realised, well hang on, I'll just take it apart. And I took a couple of pieces off. And all that came off of it was the rectifier with the um, auxiliary. This is the free power mod, which I've done a video on. If you search DLZ free power mod, Spice 10, it'll probably just come up. Um, that's a job I did in the past. So that's actually sort of self-explanatory where it goes and what it does. And then this is just the earth cable, which goes to the battery and to the side of the starter motor, which I mentioned before. So that's it. that. Everything else just kind of sits where it already is. Um, I've got the CDI in, uh, that's the, the brain of the bike. I've placed the star solenoid over this side and I know that these kind of have to go up here. I'm gonna have to look at some pictures. I need to put the battery box on. So let's just get on and do it. And I know that goes on there like that. And that goes through, yeah, so. Okay, that was another case of I just had to keep trialing and erroring everything. And it might not look uh, much different to you, but the wiring is now in. Believe it or not, that is actually where that connector sits normally, which is why that bit of paintwork got rubbed so badly in the past and why I've got the helicopter tape there. But I've now got all the wiring put through. It's all nice and neat. This is all ready to receive the battery. I've got the battery box in. Uh, the CDI is in and the cover is on and my white balance is now very confused. I'm sorry, this is looking very orange. My God. Hold on. Um, and I've also put on the frame cover and the frame rubber. So until I have the handlebars, I can't put on the other bits and pieces up here, like, you know, the switch gear. Uh, until I get the headlight, I can't mount that in. So I've got to wait for that to turn up from America. So all the wiring is now done apart from these three, which is tail light and indicators. And then the tail light itself, I need to just take these brackets off, get the new one from RNG, huge thanks to them for the help with the project, uh, and just get the cables and everything on here correct. They actually include some uh, bullet connectors and stuff, but I'm not sure if those are the right size, but I have other ones. They have splicing things, which they're not going to be relevant for this. Uh, but otherwise the cabling is all there and it's all the same. So I just need to, you know, switch those over, make those, ooh, <laughs> and uh, that'll be the tail light done and that'll be the electrics done. Please accept my apologies. From this point onwards in the video, the audio is going to be from the camera, so it's not going to be quite as good as usual. That's because there was a break in my microphone cable, as it turns out, uh, and I didn't get any audio for the rest of this video. I just had clicking sounds. So unless you're a dolphin, I don't think it's going to be much use to you. But things will resume to normal in the next episode. As you can hear, I've sorted out a new mic. Okay, job number one. Take off the little brackets and put them on the new light. I've marked what was top so I can remember because I don't want to put it on upside down. Thankfully, the, uh, the new light comes with hardware because these are all rusty. But the brackets themselves are alley, so they're not going to, you know, there's nothing wrong with them. And uh, I could probably, well, I could repaint them because they've been powder coated, but it's peeled off. You can't see it. It's under the bike. They're not going to rust. It's hidden away. I'm not going to bother. From what I can tell, these are fairly generic. Um, there's a few different ones that all look kind of the same. I, I, I'm leading towards thinking that these are identical. Now, the, the numbering on them is very slightly different, and this is um, RNG on it. So it's just a different branded one, I guess. Okay, I just offered that up to the bike. That is correct, and they would actually just about fit. Um, but that's touching the frame, so I'm just going to trim them. Uh, this is the little Dremel light. Dremel sent me this to a review. I have to point that out to you. Um, but I have a review there if you want to see it. Okay, not enough power. <laughs> This is the problem with battery tools. Right, I'm going to use the 4300. This was also sent to me by Dremel. But, uh, and again, I have a full review on this.
and that's why it's worth having more powerful Dremels. As I say, the battery is dying on this, so don't think that was a representation of its perfect uh, output, but it's just the, the torque and everything, the more, it's going to be more, it's got mains power going to it. Anyway, uh, right, I need to look through here, what have we got? Master cylinder, not those. Oh, wait! It was... The bolts we took out of the tail were really nasty, weren't they? So I need to find replacements. That's not a problem. I found some I can use, but I'm going to have to chop these down because these will be way too long. I'm going to need to make three cable types out of this. So we're going to have a black one and a red one, and I now need to delineate, is that a good word? The uh, a sign, a colour to it. So I'm going to try and stripe it. Focus, there you go. Black striped, so we know which cable that always is. Good stuff. The reason I want to do it like this is because um, the bullet connectors obviously are much bulkier than these are. As with all the wiring, there's been a fair amount of faffery, so let's show you the finished article. Uh, the bolts I cut were too short because I forgot I had to put the tail tidy on, so I've now uh, lengthened those. Well, shortened other ones, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> put actual proper nuts on them so it's a bit more secure. Uh, the cabling then very nice and neatly comes down here runs around here, around the inside here, and then I have my multi-connector that's been shortened with the bullet connectors all there, and that's gonna sit either side of here. Battery's in because I needed to test it, uh, and I had a bit of problems because I was having issues where the brake light was on all the time, and I was thinking, why is the brake light on all the time? And then it suddenly dawned on me. These switches aren't like momentary on switches, they're like momentary off switches, so, for the brake light to be off, the front brake one and the rear brake one both need to be pressed. And then when you release one or the other, that's what makes the brake light turn on. So, I've put the rear brake on, nice and easy. Uh, so that's now depressing that one. Uh, the master cylinder isn't there, but that's, you know, it's one of the next jobs. I had to whack the clocks on because I needed to be able to plug in everything, uh, including the ignition. So in theory, if I turn the key, yep, that comes on. So this is the front brake switch, so I need to depress that now. So as you can see, the LED tail light is on and the plate illumination light is on. And if I release the front brake switch, we have that. And if I then try with the back one, yeah! Okay, so I've just temporarily popped this old plastic on. As you can see, this is the way everything sits. Everything's very ni nice and neat and out of the way. The cable connector is actually waterproof here because the seat goes over all of this. Um, the indicators have to go through a hole really that's in here but that's fine because I can run those along the inside and I've got the connectors here. That is a job I'm going to do tomorrow uh, off camera. It's no different to what I did before. I'm just going to stick bullet connectors on the end basically. But as you can see that is a pretty neat job of the wiring uh, and far better than it was before so that's good. So the electrics is now done and everything's in place other than just making up those two cables but that's not going to be a problem. Um, Next I need to put the brake system on. I don't have bars yet to bleed them and have bars and all that on yet But I can get them on the actual bike and same for the rear as you can see We're completely missing the brake system here, but that can go on nice and easily and as I mentioned the headlight still isn't here But once I have the headlight that side panel that I'm waiting to come in uh, and the handlebars They're the last three things I need uh, and to say two of them on the way and one I need to order And then it's just gonna be a matter of doing the last few pieces and then and then we get to put the new plastics on oh, What an episode that is gonna be Huge thanks to my patient supporters, huge thanks to the people who enjoy these videos, and remember to hit that like button, so few do, and the subscribe button. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to hit the like button and subscribe to see future videos. This channel is made possible by the support of the audience. Please consider joining my Patreon to get early access to videos, questions answered in the monthly Q&A, your name on screen, and some exclusive content, all for as little as a dollar a month. You can also check out the links in the description to my merch and other ways to directly support the channel. Thanks for watching.